do they believe in, right? We've talked about how the Democratic Party uh, essentially uh, created legislations and acts and um, put forward, uh, you know, laws that don't benefit the working class. Well, um, a lot of MPP, uh, you know, is uh, very similar to Bernie's platform. So there you go, you know. So if you're a displaced Bernie supporter and you're sitting there and I go, I got to hold my nose, I got to hold my nose and pull that lever and passively participate in democracy, uh, well, you got a place to go. You got something you can support. You got something that you can put your weight behind. Um, you know, one of the big things is UBI, a universal basic income, uh, in order to address automation. And this is going to be different than what Andrew Yang proposed. I think what Andrew Yang proposed was a very rudimentary kind of compromised version of universal basic income. It kind of, um, you know, didn't it, it didn't really take into account um, the the social protections and social programs that are already in place and use that as a jumping off point. Rather, it it used that as a supplementary option. Um, it really didn't help. The, the American people all that much. Uh, it, um, if you're really going to implement UBI, it has to be something that's going to address a major level of displacement of labor. And I don't think, I think he talked about it and he did address it, but his plan doesn't really, uh, um, talk about it all that much. It was very rudimentary. I think it was meant to get people that were scared of the word socialism on board with something like UBI. Um, you know, and, and we do have the rise of automation. This has been happening for a long time. This is not just all of a sudden we're like, oh, tr trucking companies are going to be using, or, you know, uh, automated trucks or, oh, they're self-driving cars used by Uber. This has been happening for a long time. Grocery stores have been doing it for a super long time. Self-checkouts. I mean, self-checkouts are essentially just automation. You know, that's essentially all they are. Um, they, they're, they're automating the worker and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of, um, you know, corporations start ramping this up because I bet the, because of the quarantine and because of this whole social distancing thing of why well, I don't want to get in anywhere near another human, stay back, stay back humans, stay back, right? That, that sort of pushback that we have, um, has probably pushed more people to use the self-checkout, um, than they would on a normal basis. And I wouldn't be surprised if going forward they were going to employ more of that self-checkout in the retail and food industries, especially on a corporate level, right, which is going to displace a lot of those workers. And there's a shit ton of retail workers. There's a shit ton of retail workers. And if you displace all of them, what are we going to do? Those jobs don't exist anymore. And there aren't just magical new jobs that are going to be created in, in the absence of this job, right? There's no replacement. There's no retraining. So what are we going to do? Well, you have to create a UBI system um, that ensures that if you lose your job, we got you. We're, you're, you're taken care of. Don't worry. We got your back. Um, you know, and, and it's it can be mixed with a federal jobs guarantee so that people, you know, do feel like they have work to do. So... If you are somebody that's like, eh, I've never really thought about what my passion was. I just want to be told what to do here. Okay, I have no interest in, in kind of creating something. I'm, eh, I, don't, I don't want, that's fine. That's not for everybody, right? Some people are, are better at just taking directions to somebody else and implementing that and putting that in place. That's okay. And if, you know, so, so federal jobs guarantee would help something like that. But I think uh, federal jobs guarantee without UBI, um, probably not great. It's not going to end well. Um, so I think they kind of are complementary. They kind of go hand in hand with each other. Um, Medicare for all, that's a no-brainer. I think more people want uh, Medicare for all than what is actually being projected. Uh, Health care is a human right. Um, and uh, and that's, been, that's been talked about for a super long time that healthcare is a human right, you know? Um, and more people are, are, are lining up with that. More people have lined up with that. So again, 
uh, both of these, just these first two issues alone, the Democratic establishment is against. Joe Biden straight up said that he would veto a Medicare for All bill. If, if Congress agreed on it, Jay Paul and Bernie Sanders bill, for example, and they agreed, they approved it, it went through the House, it went through the Senate, it got to Joe Biden's desk, he would not sign, he would veto it. Straight up said that. I don't know, does that sound like it's somebody that lines up with your belief system there? It doesn't line up with mine, it doesn't line up with my thoughts. So if a universal basic income idea comes into play, uh, you know, what's he going to say about that? I don't even think he knows what this is, to be honest. Another thing they talk about is the Economic Bill of Rights. The Economic Bill of Rights. Uh, this is ensuring that people have, um, you know, financial access to food, water, housing, health care, recreation. And this is all stuff that, by the way, FDR talked about back in 1944. Um, you know, 1944, 60 years ago? 60 years ago, we were talking about this. Uh, and we didn't put it in place. And we should have. And we still can. Because the way that it's built now, money is a limiter. Money is not this expander in our society. It doesn't open up opportunities. Uh, for most of us, um, money is a limiter. Most of us can't do things because we don't have the money to do them. Most of us can't purchase things because we don't have the money to do them. And, you know, the, the old argument is, we'll just go make more money. Well, wait, where? If you're already working... 60 to 80 hours, two to three jobs, where are you going to go get more money? Where are you going to go find more time? Where are you going to create this energy for yourself as a human being, as a living thing, to just go make more money? Especially in a system that, you know, has stagnated the minimum wage for 10 years. Where's that? Where are you going to get paid? And then if you ask for, oh, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. You're being greedy, you fifteen dollars an hour with that bullshit you're being greedy is what you're being okay these ceos need to make 252 times more than you and that's big i mean they have yachts to buy and uh uh uh, uh, uh people to to that uh, tweeze their ball hairs that's i mean they got to pay that person i mean they don't because it's an intern doing it but you know the thoughts there the thought and the thoughts what counts you're just being greedy. That's how they look at it. With the UBI and this Economic Bill of Rights, um, this would be a dynamic change in our society where um, you wouldn't be looking at money as a limiter, but it would expand you uh, to creating um, more innovation, to more productivity, to us feeling like we are... We are being taken care of where our work isn't being exploited uh you would you would have creativity and intellect and uh innovation being more cherished than competition and profit than needing your name up in lights it's cool to see your name up in lights but is i think it's cooler to know that uh we're all going to be taken care of, and we all can support on each other to do that. I think that's way cooler than having my name in the lights. Uh, one of the other things they talk about is reducing a, uh, reducing it down to a four-day work week uh, for the automation transition. So people can kind of get used to having more time to do what they feel like is important. Um, and the argument that's always used against us is, oh, so you're going to create a bunch of artists. That's what you're going to, oh, a bunch of, uh, no, not everybody's interested in arts. What if you really wanted to work on cars and you didn't get an opportunity to do that? You know, what if you want to start a, um, a, a food pantry and you didn't have a way to do that? What if you wanted to start a vertical farm and you didn't have an opportunity to do that because you didn't have the time or the money 
Uh, you have to work at this office job. You have to work at this retail place. You have to go into, you have to go into banking, which is not what you wanted to do. You know, now you can pursue your passion. You or, or you can look at it and go, well, where, where can I fit in? What is what is a a missing element in society that I can contribute to? And then you go and do that because this gives you a sense of purpose. This gives you a sense of meaning. With UBI and all that, people can do that. And a four-day work week means that you have more time to, you know, donate to pursuing that. Now, UBI need, also needs rent and housing control, uh, which means that just because somebody is getting, let's let's just say for the sake of easy math, a thousand dollars a month, you can't increase your rent so that their rent is now $800 a month instead of it being 400 because you're like, well, you have the money. You can just, no, you, uh, there has to be a flat out rent control um, and no monopolies on this thing either uh, because, th because now without this, you know, major housing debt, um, people can actually like pursue what they want to. They can actually like take a responsibility. They can expand their life, make their lives a lot better instead of worrying about how they're going to pay off these debts. Um, and that's also going to, you know, I think that's also going to, I've I mentioned this once or twice before in the discussion of UBI, it, it is, um, you know, it is going to change the way that we look at real estate in general, that um, a one-bedroom apartment in New York City should not cost more than a one-bedroom apartment in Boise, Idaho, or Houston, Texas, or Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or Washington, D.C. Why would you do that? There is absolutely no reason for it. They're all cities. They're all hubs. They all have people. They all have in particular industries that do particularly well. They all have places of recreation. They all have places of health care. They all have places of, of feeding each other. Why, why are we claiming that New York City is worth more than Washington, D.C. or Pittsburgh or Cleveland? This insane idea will be, I, I think that's, it's a crazy idea. Because I'm in New York City, I have to pay $4 more for a slice of pizza. And this is not going to be a popular opinion. Uh, uh, I've uh, had uh, better pizza in Pittsburgh than I have in New York. I've had better pizza in Buffalo, New York than I've had in New York City. So, you know, this notion of real estate being tied into the city that you're in uh, will probably diffuse that idea. So that if you if you do have to move to San Francisco because because you like being by the bay, because you like the Golden Gate Bridge, you can do that. And you don't have to sit there and be like, well, I don't have the money to live in San Francisco. If you want to move to New York City because you want to be in New York City, uh, then you can do that. And not say, well, you know, it would mean starting all over again. You can just do it. The Movement for a People Party also says that Social Security is an obligation by the government. Um... You have Democrats like Joe Biden that have constantly wanted to slash Social Security, decrease the Social Security budget. Um, we're at a point where I don't think my generation is looking at retirement. I take a day off and I have a panic attack because it's like, oh my God, I'm not making some making content that might have somebody donate something to me. And oh my God, you, you know, like that's the uh, sheer panic that I exist in, uh, I don't think I'm looking at retirement. I think when my body starts failing, um, you know, maybe in my 50s or something, I'm not going to be able to tour 40 some odd weeks of the year. And I'm going to have to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do. But Social Security should be an obligation for, by the government. That if you have been in the workforce for 50, 60 years, something like that, um, you know, because some people work till, I, I know people that are currently working in their 80s. When I worked at, uh, at Starbucks, there was a woman that was in her, like, 70s that was a barista. Holy shit. 
That lady was slinging the shit out of some lattes. You know, putting up with every single entitled suburbanite that would come in. She's fucking whipping them out. She's quick. And they shouldn't, and you, you literally shouldn't have to. Some people start working. I, I started working when I was 14. You know, so I've been, I've been working for a third of what other people have been work, working for. And when you get to that point, when you've worked for that long, don't you think some you've deserved to live out the rest of your days stress-free in, in peace? Isn't that what your retirement should be? You shouldn't have to worry about money. You shouldn't have to worry about how you're going to pay your rent or how you're going to cover your utilities. That should be covered for you. You shouldn't have to worry about what you're going to do for fun. And instead of Social Security, they preach, you know, 401ks, which are tied to Wall Street, which are tied to the market. So if something happens, then there goes your fucking Social Security. Your retirement is tied into your, your employer, which if your employer lets you go, then what happens? There's no more of that matching program. There's no more income going into that. They, they, these employers, if they fire you, they, and this has never happened to me. I got fired from a corporation, and uh, and I had a four hundred one k with them that um, you know I took a percentage of my paycheck. You know, let's just say again for the sake of easy math, we'll say a hundred dollars out of my paycheck. If I was getting paid twenty five hundred dollars every paycheck, um, I took a hundred dollars out of that and I put it into this four hundred one k, and then the company would match that. So they would be so I would essentially be putting in two hundred dollars every paycheck so if i was getting paid twice a month it's four hundred dollars a month that would go into this thing and then there was like a interest of whatever it was right they fired me i can't put a, that 200 bucks a month in anymore and they're not matching that so it's basically zero was going into that so i have a 401k that's been doing nothing so really i mean if they cared about it then the corporation would say We're, once you get fired we will um while you're filing unemployment we will just put in that additional $200 into that 401k um, or until you find a new job. So for the time of unemployment, uh, we will be putting money into it because we're firing you and you're leaving you without really any notion of getting a new job. But they don't, um, you know. The corporate government says there's there's not enough for social programs all the time too, right? Like the cutting of social security. Well, we gotta cut social security. We gotta cut these uh, important medical programs for um, the most vulnerable in our society because uh, you know we gotta we gotta fund those wars. We gotta give handouts to corporations. They're I mean the corporate they're struggling. You know, I heard last year uh, billionaires. Uh, weren't able to buy a, a jet yacht combo. I mean, that's. Have you heard anything more depressing? Sure, um, um, you know, a, a family of four wasn't able to uh, feed their kids and haven't taken a vacation in ten years. But that jet yacht combo, you know, what is this mega billionaire going to entertain the models in? How is he going to see scantily clad women? or scantily clad men, whatever you're into. Have you heard anything? More? Sure, there were uh, millions of people that had health insurance uh, and weren't able to you know, afford medical treatments that they needed or medication that they needed, but scantily clad people. Has that not brought a tear to your eye? But, you know, when, when regular people are looking for basic human rights, people go, oh, you guys are lazy. You guys are just being lazy for, for, for wanting these uh, basic human rights. But then we champion these corporations, right? If you champion these billionaires that, that don't pay taxes on their billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars, we champion, oh, these guys are amazing. We champion them for being cheats and liars. Another thing they believe in is decentralizing the energy system. 
uh, with the renewable technologies uh, like uh, rooftop solar, geothermal, stuff like that. We've already, we've actually known for a long time that solar is um, far more efficient than fossil fuels. It actually does provide us with more energy than, uh, than fossil fuels. Uh, it's at least twice as efficient. Um, and that's right now, right? With all of the restrictions and all of the pushback from the fossil fuel industry, we found that it's at least twice as efficient as, as energy that's coming from natural gas, energy that's coming from coal, that's energy that's coming from oil. Imagine how much more efficient we would have made it. Imagine how advanced our energy infrastructure would be if we had supported the research and put that into practice for solar energy, for geothermal, for wind energy. And I'm not saying that there isn't. There is, but it's very limited and it's taxed heavily or there's pushback from the fossil fuel industry that most of these Democrats and Republicans will support the fossil fuel industry. Don't forget that Barack Obama let Exxon drill in the Arctic. Or was it Exxon or Shell? One of the one of those one of those horrific maniac companies. You, you lose track, okay? You lose track. There's so many of these fucking sociopaths that are like, we got to burn more shit and put it into the atmosphere and we'll be fine. Set it all on fire. You know, that corporation. Um, but that's what we need more of. We need more of these. Uh, Tesla's been talking about solar roofs. They've been talking about solar batteries. Um, imagine if there were four or five companies that were doing that. Imagine if there was a government program funding all of this stuff. How much, how much money, time, and energy we could have put into it? If there was a political party that was, that was helping improve that technology. They've, uh, they've said that uh, it's like one-fifth of the amount of space that the fossil fuel industry takes up is how much the solar energy would take up. And that would also create new jobs because you have to, you have to make these solar plants. You have to make these batteries. Uh, create a brand new grid system, uh, you know, that would inhabit that. And so that's jobs, that's infrastructure. And then you have to maintain, you know, have people that know what they're doing and regulating it. So, you know, what they claim is, oh, it's impossible. It is possible. It's just going to take some work. Maybe restructure the economy so we can. They also are encouraging food production and sustainable farming. I talked about this about a year or two ago. Maybe it's been two years since I've talked about this, but I did a whole forkful of noodles about why organic food is, is so expensive. And part of that was um, talking about, you know, different sort of agricultural things like regenerative farming. There's a guy named Robert Rodale that talked about regenerative farming, which is basically... Um, it's farming that uh, is enclosed uh, nutrient uh, loops to enrich soil. So the idea is like you don't plant the same thing in the same soil every single year, right? That you kind of seasonally um, plant certain crops. And those certain crops, after they're harvested, will leave the soil with nutrients in it so that when you come back, you know, you can plant more, more food. The, the soil keeps regenerating itself. It's, it's just, it's kind of how nature operates. You know, it, it does, it, it operates in these cycles. Um, you know, so, so think about it this way, right? Like you guys know how excited you get every October when like pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin flavored bullshit comes in, um, you know, because it's that special time of the year where that special blend of like orange dye and pumpkin flavored chemicals are just thrown into lattes and cookies and M&Ms and all of those things. It's just like that, but like with real food and not poisons. Um, so we could just get it used to that a little bit more to be like, oh, it's a rutabaga season. Cool. Let's go get some rutabagas. And if we'd run out of rutabagas, yeah, all right, that's okay. Maybe my neighbor has, a, 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 you know, just a little extra rutabaga paradigm shift you know just societal cultural shifts they also support vertical farming which is basically using hydroponics ai climate control um and and it's this is a little bit limited because you can't do root plants because it's hydroponic you can't do root plants um you know so it's only like the hipster ones kale basil 
man buns, uh, all the hipster plants that come through. Uh, but no, but vertical farming is 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 a, a direction that you can that you can go in, um, and it's more efficient in terms of space usage uh, because you can't um, you know we do we only have specific amounts of land we only have a, a small amount of land uh, that we can use for farming, but it also reduces toxins that go into our water supply, chemical runoffs, um, it creates a healthier food source. It creates healthier communities, and realistically, it would be reduced prices too, uh, because there's not that employee cost. If you're going to automate it, right? There's technically less employment, um, and the reason why organic foods are so expensive, anyway, is because of the regulatory needs that they need to go through. Uh, that the government has put a far a lot more regulations on that sort of stuff. The far far more regulations on organic foods than non-organic foods. For sure. So, so more chemically treated foods are actually cheaper because they have less regulations to use uh, whatever chemicals. So that's sort of what the Movement for a People Party really stands for. Um, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit the like button. Share this out with some friends, with some enemies, anybody that you might think would enjoy content like this. And make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Uh, during this quarantine, I'm going to be putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day surrounding ideas like the one you just heard. Uh, so if you enjoyed this and want more, uh, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I would also tell you guys about some live stand-up comedy dates, but at the moment, I, uh, I don't have any. As a touring comedian, I am uh, unfortunately grounded and uh, have to stay put till, till this whole calamity ends. Uh, so hopefully uh, in, in the next few months, I'll, be, I'll, I'll have some stand-up dates for you guys. Uh, and I am working on a Zoom stand-up comedy show, and I will give details to that. Uh, as uh, as details to that come out uh, but in the meantime enjoy these videos and if you have the ability to donate if you can make a donation uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation over at ramen noodles comedy.com slash donate uh, that's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com slash donate any little bit uh, will help, but I understand that everybody's going through a pretty difficult time right now. So donating or making any sort of financial contribution is not necessary. All my content is going to be up 100% uh, for free for everybody to enjoy, uh, regardless of your financial situation. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you guys will come back and check out more videos. Till then, we'll see you on the road.